Oh, have I got a treat for you guys today. So I just got back from the shop. Oh, try that again. So I just got back from the shop and got this awesome stone called maple leaf rock and I've never seen it before. Look at that detail. I don't know why the hell I'm showing you my car. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Okay, <laughs> oh, so here we are, back in the fish studio, obviously. Where else would we be? I need to remember to stop shouting, actually. I don't need to shout anymore because I've got a mic now, so that's really good. Uh, so yeah, as you've just seen, I've just come back from the shop to get some new rocks that I've never seen before, which is the maple leaf rock, which I've got down here. Yeah, so there's tons of little crevices in it and lots of really nice texture. So I've got this rock because I want it to go in a different kind of tank to what you guys are used to me showing you. Now, up until this point, I've shown you all proper low end, really cheap ways of doing the hobby. And that's great, but obviously there will be some of you watching that uh, have a little bit more money or been doing, doing the hobby for a little bit longer and actually want to spend a little bit more money. Um, so what's really good is that a company called Waterbox Aquariums have actually sent me one of their tanks, which is this cube one here. Uh, I've mentioned it on a few of my other videos, some vlog style ones, and asked you guys what you thought you'd like to see in there. And it was unanimous, almost unanimous, in that they want you want to see a pea puffer tank. And I've never kept pea puffers before. I kept one for once. It didn't live too long. It's back when I didn't really know what I was doing. I wasn't really ready for them, if I'm honest. Um, they're not the easiest, easiest of fish to keep because they, they like specific diets, mainly blood worms and snails, but you know other things as well. But yeah, this this tank here is high end. There's no denying that. It's not cheap. But I just wanted to give you you know a contrast of the other end of the spectrum. We do we have a lot of the cheaper tanks here. You know, a lot of, like for instance, even the massive aquatorium you see behind me is still low cost in terms of, you know, it's generic tanks from, from China that all Pond Solutions buy in and they're a really good price. So the point I'm making is that I'm just gonna be showing you now the other end of the spectrum. Um, if all, the light we've also got is an AI Prime, which is absolutely insane. I'll go into more details about that as we go on and uh, Tell you a bit more about it but it's, it's fully programmable from your phone from the app and it does a day uh, a dawn and dusk cycle and all that and color whatever color you want you know all that sort of thing um obviously as i've said to you before it's not needed i've, I've grown everything you see around me with just you know your led floodlights um so it's not needed but it doesn't mean it doesn't do a better job it definitely does a better job uh, just being able to change the color rendition to suit the plants, for instance, is just a massive bonus that can just make, you can make a whole tank look completely different just on something like that alone. So yeah, that's gonna be exciting. Um, so first things first, I'm gonna, just gonna get started on actually putting some of the rocks in and going for the shape. I'm gonna go for an island composition. Um, the reason being a cube and an island, I mean, it just goes hand in hand, doesn't it? And I think it'd be really cool to see the pea puffers just rotating around the island and. I'm going to go for about five or six in there. I think that is a good good amount for the uh, for the size of the tank, which is it's 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters in terms of actual space. Um, so some people have said to me about five or six pea puffers. They they find their own little territories that be really good and interesting to watch, and I'm really looking forward to that. So, right, let's just crack on. Okay, here we are. Look, look at that. It's actually quite difficult to give you a sense of scale. So I'll put my hand up. Look, there you go. You can see the size we've got. We've got a lot to work with here. And that is the light I'm telling you about, the AI Prime. Absolutely gorgeous. It's blinking green. I'm just assuming that means it's working well. <laughs> Should probably read the instructions. So let's crack on. I'm gonna, first of all, I wanna, as as always, well not as always, sometimes I do a little bit. Sometimes I like to put substrate first and then put rocks in afterwards and build up around that. This time I'm not doing that. I'm gonna build my island out of that maple leaf rock first. And then I can put some nice substrate in inside of that and lock it all in. Right, let's crack on with that. Yeah, I'm restless, so give me something to do. Yeah, I can't stay here because I need to dance. Jump, jump around and show them how I move. Uh oh, uh, uh, uh. everybody will be on me. 
You know what, guys? My Christ, I think I've done it. That's quite good. So I was trying to fill in, I don't know if you saw just a minute ago, the time lapse, I was trying to fill in this area here. Then I thought, what are you doing? I, I want that. Look at it. That nice big dip there. I can visualize a big load of sort of moss spilling over or something, some kind of plant spilling over that area. We've got not, lots of space for a nice load of prongs that don't look like my hand, but prongs of wood coming up from the middle. Give it that proper sort of explosive, that means explosive, explosive island look. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, as always, I now need to fill in gaps, but this stuff is actually brilliant. It slots together really well. There's not many gaps, actually. There's a slight gap down there. And, oh, no, no. <laughs> well, can I, can I get into that? There we go. That one there, see? I think I'm going to use pea pebble, to be honest. It's a little bit coarse, and then I've got the ADA La Plata sand, the gold on the bottom, and all the colours I kind of think are going to complement each other really well, so I'll give that a go. I'll put the pea stuff in first. The pea pebble for pea puffer tank, that's brilliant. <laughs> Even if I do say so myself. Yeah, I'm going on it, I don't need to stop. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to hear that bass drop dance. It's all I wanna, wanna do right now. Oh, oh, oh. everybody will be on me, wanna join me when I take a shot. Okay, now it's time for the Tropica growth substrate. So it's basically, it's the powder. So effectively, what I'm doing there with that is I'm using this gravel, Tropica substrate, to make that mix that you guys all think is the reason my tanks do so well. It's just making a nutrient rich substrate and then the aquasaur can go on top of that. It's just providing even more nutrients that are locked down for the plants. I'm just an accident way to Okay, so I think that's looking pretty cool. So I don't want to go too heavy on the wood because I want to focus more on the plants on this, but the, the main reason I've just gone for straight upright pretty much is just to keep that islandy look. Uh, I've got some really nice gaps here and here for some Anubias and Bucephalandra that's going to look really good as well. Right, it's been a few days because I've been away with work, but uh, we're now ready for planting. And I've got a bit of a confession to make. I really need to hurry up because on the way back from where I've been for work, I stopped off at one of the fish shops and I saw something there that I just had to buy. Now, this was originally going to be a pea puffer sort of island. Um, yeah, that's, that's not happening anymore. Uh, but I'll give you a hint, it is a puffer, so, you know, it, anyway, you're going to see, it's the cutest little thing in the world, oh, don't, shh, don't tell Pancho I said that. I think he heard me. I need to crack on, um, there's no issue with me doing it this way because, you know, I'm experienced enough with fish keeping now to know that I can seed the tank straight away. I've got so many tanks dotted around and lots of mature media that I can put in the, uh, the internal sump system so that it's effectively instantly cycled. I can use water from a big, big discus tank, which is the correct temperature. Um, it's, it's all the right levels that would actually suit the, puff, the puffer as well. So yeah, we're all good. Let's just crack on because I'm really looking forward to showing you what we've got. <laughs> right, we've got a great range of plants all provided to us by Tropica. We've got Limnophila sesososa, um, Rotala rotundifolia, see that I can I can do that one, and 
Hygophilus Siamensis 53B. Another one, see, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. And then I've got a big bucket of the potted stuff down here, just a bit of a paper towel and some water on it, just to keep it moist whilst we're setting it up. But um, I'm just gonna do this and film it and not chat because two reasons. One, there's builders next door that are making such a racket and number two, Oh, there. There's the other tank I just set up. I'll leave a card above. Hello, Pancho. You're going to be jealous, but you're going to have a friend. They'll probably be able to see each other, actually, through here at some point. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm just going to crack on now because time is of the essence. And now for my favorite plant, the Limnophilia. Look at that, it's just always amazingly green. This is why it's my favorite. It doesn't require hardly any light. I mean, this, it does grow more stalky without decent light, but you, you can keep replanting and it's all good. Um, it doesn't require CO2, although obviously any plant is better with, but that's why it's my favorite. It just makes every tank just vibrant and lush. Let's get it in. So in terms of, of plants that we're attaching, I've got four pots of the Trident Fern, three pots of the Wendelov Chava Fern, I've got two pots of Anubius Nana, and I've got three pots of Bucephalandra Red and three pots of Bucephalandra Wavy Green. Right, filtration wise, I've got this power head which sits right at the bottom of that section there. Then you've got your overflow into the weir which has a filter sock which comes down to the bottom, over the top again, and then down through some sponges, through some media, and then back into an empty chamber where I'll put the heater and then back out again. Um, first of all then, I wanna get this power head in, hook it up to the pipe work, fill up the tank, and then I can put in the livestock. Cannot wait! Right, so here's the discus tank. And as you can see from that, there's quite a bit of filtration going on already. I've got 1,000 litres, 1,000 litres. And I'm just going to pull the plug, undo the latch. Spill some water everywhere. <laughs> oh God, thank goodness my wife's not in, she's going nuts. Yeah, I'm just gonna take this outside, open it up, steal some of the media from there because I've got way, way more than I actually need. And also given the fact that there's a huge bed in here as well, you know. Right, so yeah, take it out, put it in a net and then I can put it into the new tank. 
Well, considering that we, I had to add some tap water to the tank, I'm going to add the tap safe, aqua safe for Tetra. It's just you know, normal sort of stuff. Just makes the tap water safe, and also I'm going to just chuck in a load of this bacteria as well, just to be better to be safe than sorry, isn't it? I just want to know then 100% that everything is absolutely perfect, ready to go. So here's the puffer in the tank. Now it's a dragon puffer, as you probably know. Water's still a bit murky because obviously it's only been a few minutes. But how cool is that? Wake up, baby, all the stars are shining bright. Yeah, we should stay up so that we can look at them all night. Just keep holding me, don't let me go. Everything's so magical. All I need is you tonight. If I shut my eyes, keeping them closed, all of the senses explode. You and me under the sky. Let's stay. Okay, that's the tank finished. I think it's looking really good. And I think the puffer likes it as well. You can just, it's just chilling at the moment. Um, just had his feed, so it's obviously letting it digest. But yeah, you know, I, I saw him in the shop and I just couldn't resist. And I knew I had the tank ready to go pretty much. All I really had to do was fill it up with water because I knew I had enough uh, filter media to, you know, seed it straight away. Now this particular puffer actually 
has grown up in the tank with other, with fish as well, so it uh, doesn't actually eat them, uh, which is which is quite rare, I think, because they're predator, they're, they're ambush predators, so they normally just wait for something to come in front of them. They've got really good eyesight, and they'll just pounce on it. But I've seen the fish not going up to its face, and nothing happening at all. And, and the pet shop manager told me that they've been living with fish in its tank before with no problems. So it might be something to consider later on, see how it goes. I'm not sure yet. I might just keep it as a species only tank. Where are you going, fella? Not too shy, actually, because I've seen online some of them just stay constantly hidden, but he doesn't seem to mind being out in the open too much at all. But yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, guys, then please consider subscribing, liking, commenting, all that stuff. Um, as I've always said, I do read all of your comments, and I do enjoy reading all your comments as well. So, But anyway, guys, catch you next time, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Cheers. Yeah.